Uh, I'm about to replace the three main solenoids SLT, SLU, SLS on this Volvo S60, it's a 2003 automatic AC transmission. We have uh, usually this have problems with uh, upshifting second to third, uh, downshifting second to first and stuff like this, clunks, kicks, all the stuff. 2001-2002 uh, you might also have an issue with the valve body most often times but 2003 and up it's mainly these three solenoids that's because uh, we don't replace the fluid every maybe 50,000 miles or so and they get stuck they get clogged um, so uh, this is going to be a video in three parts I think the first part so I'm just showing a bit uh, the material I will I will need to use uh, stands. I will need to lift uh, the front of the car on both sides, remove both welds. Um, I will the, the hydraulic lift. I'm going to slide it underneath the subframe. At a certain moment, I will explain why. I'm going to use this uh, gray silicon for the gasket around the pan on the uh, valve body. And also, you may need a cleaner, brake cleaner, or something, carburetor cleaner to. Uh, really remove all the uh, oil uh, just before sealing back the cover um, I will use a bottle jack these are really inexpensive and uh, I will use it actually because I'm going to drop the subframe in the front front to bolts but I want to keep the engine at the level same at the same position basically only thing I want to do is just lower the subframe to remove the cover and also for two uh, specific bolts on the cover uh, half an inch ratchet it's a it's a must for the subframe bolts a long extension that's a two feet one which I'll slide over the handle uh, also very important for the two subframe bolts the front bolts of the subframe in theory you need to replace them because they are stretch bolts they need to be torqued and then turned instead i will put them back but check them if they are rusted you need to replace them uh i will just put them back and not do the final tur turn or something i will just secure them properly uh, and i'm not going to replace them you need the pan we are going to drop uh drain the the oil inside the transmission which And when we are refilling careful, because some people make mistakes, you need to search. This is a non-turbo engine, so I have left stuff, left stuff in here, but you need to search for the, um, it's right there. That's the refilling, uh, that's the dipstick, and we are going to refill through that dipstick. Do not try to remove any bolt to find the drain or uh, refill hole. There's none on this transmission, five speed AC. Uh, so yeah half an inch ratchet a strong one then you need a good set of torque torque bits because the pan uh, we are going to remove have torque screws uh, i would suggest you get a long extension um, i'm not sure if the regular small and large one are going to be enough because we are going to slide it in between the subframe and the bumper to reach the bolts as for the i think i went through it as for the solenoids you will probably let me just take a minute so this is going to be a longish video perhaps about 30 minutes but you just can skip on it i will try to explain all the uh, all the steps before i go to these guys you will going to need we are going to remove a hose here is the lower return hose i'm not sure if you can see it from this angle uh it's this hose right there it's a 10 millimeter board you will need to replace you will need to replace that seal uh, so order it in advance do not use the old one uh, you will uh, leak it have a leaking so replace that seal it's five bucks i think uh, volvo knows which one it is uh so i know it's a few uh, comments on them um there are video on internet which tell you to remove this cover and they uh, maybe there are uh, re uh, repair kits with drills and stuff like this actually that's what i did before that's what's in the car right now it's the uh, three solenoids that i drilled and tried to remove the varnish or the gunk that's stuck in them and uh, my transmission work uh, went even worse 
after this so-called repair. So my suggestion, these three solenoids, I will strongly advise you get only Rostra ones. Do not try anything else. Do not try to save, save $20, $30 on this. Um, start by buying new Rostra ones from eBay. They are about, I think one seller sends them for $120 US dollars. But read on the comments because there are sellers who put Rostra images and then send uh, Chinese uh, knockoffs. So definitely uh, check you got the right one, Rostra ones. You see this one are new ones. Have an R on them. Uh, that's how they look. This kind. And also do not buy the furbish Chinese ones which have wear on both sides here. Do not try to buy those. I mean buy the correct part first time. Uh, I'm doing this job for the second time, actually it's third time, but let's just call it second time because I try to cut corners. Buy the new part, correct one, place them and job done. This is quite a long job. And by the way, I went with this number here, 9036. Check on the Rostra site. You can also buy from the represent, uh, from, uh, uh, you know, uh, those who buy from Rostra directly. Check out the Rostra side, just make sure you buy the right uh, thing. Um, so yeah, it's a two days, uh, two days job because we need to wait for the uh, cylinder to dry up, which takes in theory 24 hours. And it's, a, it's not a bad job actually, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, oh, okay, let me just talk before I start uh, about the main difficulties you are going to see in this job. I think the worst one is the bolts on the pan. The pan is right there. It has, I think, nine bolts which have Torx heads. So you need a Torx bit into them. And they are stuck in there because of the sealant, but also because of rust and time. And you really need to be pay a lot of attention when trying to undo each bolt one by one. You really need to take your time for treat it as a separate job for each bolt especially if you live, uh, uh, um, live in the area with long winters, uh, salt on roads and stuff like this. The main idea with those bolts is not to run the inside the head where the torse comes. It's not the size of torse, I think it's larger. The other thing, when you attack that bolt, always keep the bit, keep the bit here perfectly perpendicular on the bolt. Do not try to go by side. And that's the reason why I'm lowering the subframe is that two bolts, we cannot reach it and really keep this perpendicular on them. So keep it perpendicular, put pressure, press against the bolt like this, and then try to turn, give it by feel like this. It's critical, you don't slip it. You don't run that torque star inside the bolt. If you do, you'll have to get a small Dremel, chop the head of the bolt. Probably you won't be able to replace it. Actually, I do have two bolts, which I did have to cut and I, co I couldn't uh, place a new bolt in place, but the sealant stays pretty nicely because the cover inside the cover, there's no pressure. There's just a little bit of fluid at the bottom of the cover. And by the way, when you detach the cover, you need to put your uh, pan underneath because you're gonna spill uh, maybe 200 millimeters of fluid. So you, if, if, if you came to cut a, a bolt, don't be so worried. You need the Dremel because the area is really tight. You're going to work for it, but you can seal this back in place properly. Uh, the bolts also, check inside the video uh, because I did replace most of them with another bolt, which actually is the same for the skip plate, large plastic plate has small bolts with hex head this time. I did replace, you can replace all the nine with those hex head. Uh, Volvo sells them from $1 or something like this. And there are so much, uh, such, uh, so much uh, of uh, best option. That's the bad guy. That's the Torx one. You are going to remove 40 millimeter, 40 Torx. Do not use a lower Torx. So again, this is your uh, fighting guy. And this is what I did use to replace those, all nine of them. 
uh, we will also need this uh, kind of long uh, uh, funnel and um, it needs a, a small tip at the end here because they uh, we are going to refill the, the transmission back uh, again through the dipstick and the dipstick is rather uh, a thin tube second difficulty is going to be after you've removed the bolts detaching the cover that's why Volvo that's because Volvo put on some years put a very strong sealant and the cover will feel like it doesn't want to detach no matter what so you are going to need this thing I use a butter knife a thin one try when you pry uh, try not to bend the cover because you are going to have an issue sealing it back in place so basically I'm going just to insert this at the very top edge of it insert it in several places maybe punch it a little bit in there and try to see when it starts to uh, detach it's uh, that's the second difficulty and the third difficulty is the connectors probably you already know about Volvo connectors which are absolutely terrible they are being designed by some maniac at Volvo these Vol uh, connectors on the solenoid are perhaps the worst in the car is because they have a small bump right this one guy here um, by the way if you lost passion just keep on the video and just go fast forward but I'm talking about this guy here uh, when you are going to detach this uh, connector this is attached to the valve body you need to remove first the solenoid and then with the solenoid hanging by the wire you need to detach it from this guy and uh, I'm going to I'm going to use another video which I did before and I'm going to explain how to detach this thing basically you need to reduce a little bit this bump not completely because you still need to be hooked uh, securely when it's vibrations and stuff but you need to reduce a little bit this bump uh, somehow either with the cutter either with just pressing against with the screwdriver or something like this that's another difficult part uh, I am warning you people had issues with this and it's a sensitive part you should not break it all right that's it for it uh, just the last word uh, you know this the when you purchase the Rosta ones came with instructions that's how the three solenoids stay inside the valve body that's one of them one two three you know this one thing when you were going to look at your original when you, just before removing those that are already on the car you will notice that the connector are not staying in the same position actually Rostra wants expressively and tells you expressively install the Rostra ones with all the connection upwards don't worry yours in the car are going some uh, one it's uh, I think Volvo put one with the connection uh, connector low here, low here, and up here. So you are going to switch that setup, that positioning. Don't be worried. Set uh, Rostra says that's how you, you should place the new solenoids in place. They are going to stay differently than the original ones, but that's perfectly fine. That's how Rostra wants to put. Do not put them as the original Volvo one in place. And the other thing with Rosta is this specific bracket that Rosta will give you. You need to take the one from the car, put it somewhere away and use the Rostra one, critical. And also Rostra wants to, to place it in a very specific position with the B upwards, the G downwards. So I guess it goes like this, the B, this part goes just like that. So be aware of these instructions, follow them by the letter. Um, be careful when you detach this uh, this uh, bracket because the, the, you, you will see the space is really tiny in there you don't have really a closed vision so you go by the filling uh, that's one of the bracket for the lower solenoid and then there's another bracket here at the top you are going to reuse the one that's already in the car that's not a problem and there's a uh, it's a small bolt I think it's eight millimeter on that one and uh, 10 on this one or even smaller that's a weird bracket here so carefully not to drop it not to drop the bolts the two bolts uh, just go very slow very careful and remember how the top bracket was sitting in place to place it on the SLU solenoid so just really 
uh, uh, work with care when you work around there because you, you are going just to stretch your hand underneath and work like that without close vision. Okay, so the next step in the video is going to show what to disconnect on the car. The transmission drain plug is right there and it's a pre pretty big one. It's a, uh, either I go with a ratchet like this, I just have a wrench. Uh, sometimes it's pretty stuck in there, so you're gonna have to kick it maybe with your feet. Uh, either you want to try with this one, but uh, this is the return line. Be aware there's a bracket above and you need to undo that bolt above to free that bracket. So when you remove this guy here, you can pull the line. Also be aware because of uh, it doesn't look like, but it's gonna be quite a bit of pressure. The fluid will flow pretty much horizontally. So place your bin appropriately like this so you don't spill it. And be aware this is gonna flow for, for quite a few minutes from there. That's just another approach if you don't want to fight with the bigger one. Before starting this job, I recommend try to uh, undo maybe this uh, bolt here and this one, I don't have it anymore. Those are perhaps the ones that are the most rusted, the lower ones. Try to get on them. And by the way, if I remember where, well, there's a certain sequence to remove the bolt. So before lowering the subframe, with the subframe engine all in the same position, in the normal position, undo these bolts here, the two here and then go upwards remove all the stuff remove all the bolts but this one and this one in fact this bolt and this bolt which i'm also missing are the two that you actually need the lower the subframe to get to them we need to lower the subframe to get to these two bolts here and also to remove the cover and by the way, what you see here is not what you are going to find on your uh, pan, on your cover. That's the bolt. I was talking about the one from the underneath shield of the uh, protective shield of the engine. At this point, I did remove about uh, everything on the top. Again, this is a non-turbo engine. And also the earlier years, this is 2003, had some difference here. So. It's just up to you to see uh, what exactly to remove. But let's just uh, get through the list uh, on this specific car. Um, the airbox has three clips. There's a... Uh, yeah, they are on the bracket here, which I also did remove. It has three clips like this. You can get a 10 millimeter socket and a, a long extension and just grab in the, over those teeth press downwards a little bit and then lift but you can also just pull strongly and it's gonna pop out gonna break the teeth but that's really not important you need to undo this bracket from there it's 12 millimeter to 12 millimeter broke box um, bolt you need to undo the pump if you have one that's the priming pump for the brake buster undo the hose from uh, if you have a switch or from wherever it's uh, connected the connector do not touch these guys here just undo the bracket has two bolts one one at the top one of the side side 10 millimeters uh, there's a uh, these connectors are locked on the larger bracket and i think there's just a clip you depress it and you lift it up just toss this away the idea is really to toss everything away and make some place so you can work easily then uh, this is a radiator hose, the lower one. There's a bracket on the, this thick cable. I did undo the bracket and I did actually got the ca cable out from the bracket, slide it underneath the hose. It's just go underneath. Careful, this is a bleeder, uh, air ble bleeding valve for the transmission. Uh, watch out uh, so you don't break it. Uh, don't just pass the, pass the cables on the side of it. The idea, if you look how it, how it looks, if you see how, how it looks, is really I'm just clearing the whole side, whole side here, I'm clearing the whole side of the uh, cover. Uh, so that's where it goes. You notice I did toss the whole air intake uh, air filter unit on the side. I didn't disconnect it on, the, on this non-turbo, but maybe you will need to disconnect on the turbo. The turbo may have another hose here. I'm not aware of it. so check it out on this turbo i did not 
detach the radiator hose so I'm not draining the coolant there's just enough space you notice on the side of the cover there's plenty of space and also speaking of that side of the cover yes uh, the light it's uh, not the best there's a um, there's a bracket for the dipstick, the uh, transmission dipstick, and also this return hose, it's also on that same bracket. You notice those two holes. The bracket goes right there with a 12 millimeter. You undo that bolt, toss the dipstick, it rotates a little bit, and toss, uh, you will undo this hose from underneath. Uh, let me just show where. That's where you undo the 10 millimeter is the same hose as before you have to replace do not skip on this replace that o-ring mine has already been replaced you're gonna leak some liquid so catch it up and then the hose also i forgot to say but try to clean everything uh, before around the cover around that hose really when you connect those lines we are going to disconnect these two clean everything you put when you put back in place the smallest amount of dirt is gonna leak so uh, that return hose again it's here just toss it on the side you just jiggle a little bit with, with it and you find a place for it and it's really clearing the side of the cover uh, that's one thing and you just remember the parts again before dropping the soft frame we are going to remove i think it's one two three once you remove that side bracket there's a fourth one and then there's a fifth one on the other side those are the ones that you can access and you have to uh, uh, just remove them before dropping the soframe then you remove uh, the two lower ones and then is there's two remaining and for those two then only at that moment you need to drop the subframe which i'm going to do right now and uh, oh yes uh, forgot about this line this line it's connected to the cover we need to undo it it's better not to start there if you want to try it's better to um, maybe try to undo it on the cover if you want so i'm not sure if there's a seal in there but i'm going to detach here basically this is also the line when you uh, flush the transmission fluid the way to do this is that this guy is really stuck in there especially the first time uh, you want to just uh, swing it a little bit sideways to break loose the turbo uh, uh, rings and then we are going to just insert uh, maybe it looks a bit uh, savage but uh, this really works you just keep this depressed and I'm going just to make a pry bar on this uh, bar just keep this very nicely depressed and it's good to wiggle a little bit if you can I can say it's just not exactly very easy to undo from there they are really tight like I said the very first time when you are going to do this it's gonna look like it doesn't want to come out sometimes you can break this guy I didn't replace mine here that doesn't leak unless you get dirt on it uh, if you break this this is about $30 for the kit at the Volvo dealer so right now I'm going to drop the suffering okay let's just move uh, on the left side on the front of the engine uh, we are dropping the subframe and the subframe it's attached at uh, two points and personally I haven't seen anybody else warning about this but I do aware you that we have the power steering pump here that's the um, uh, pressure line from a power steering pump it goes with a rubber section and it goes with a metal section underneath the engine towards the rock what happens is that even though there's a rubber section when you drop the subframe there, this hose actually it's attached if the camera will see it, there's right there it's a securing bolt where the hose the power steering hose the uh, pressure one it's attached to the subframe absolutely do remove that bolt i didn't and not only it was keeping the subframe from dropping properly but this section went bent and also if you are trying too hard to drop the subframe you may kink this section and this is a whole history to try to replace this 
especially uh, near the um, near the uh, steering rack it's a big mess it's a big problem so detach that bolt hopefully my camera will start zooming back again okay so that's a 10 millimeter bolt attaching it to the fr subframe it's uh, you can get a ratchet but it's going to be really long to turn but do it and i'm not going to put back uh, that bolt in place i'm going to forget it doesn't matter um the same line the same uh, power steering line goes there it has some hooks you detach those two i did detach this i think it's a gas plane i'm not sure just detach everything from the subframe so remember about this thing right remember it's important uh I'm telling you it's gonna bend it or it's gonna kick it or it's gonna uh, break it and have a leak at this uh, uh, flexible at this rubber hose so you don't want to mess with that thing even though that bolt is not easy to undo and also we have this cable uh, this cable uh, whatever name is it's also attached to the subframe and it's also keeping the subframe from dropping and it's putting stress on the cable it's bolt it's right here on the engine you see i put the bolt back in place without uh, it at any touch so detach that bolt right there it's a 10 millimeter also it's uh, this one is easier to uh, reach for it uh, besides this you need to detach two front engines this one either go for this bolt at the top it's harder to reach either go to this hole this one hole so like as i'm looking to the engine you'll notice that hole there's a 40 millimeter uh, bolt inside that's for the same mount so undo this this is a bit uh watch out so you don't drop the bolt inside the subframe here and also when you're going to put it back check with the light so it's properly aligned sometimes it's uh, harder to start this bolt uh, and also being under in the car we are going to detach this uh that's a torque uh, mount so just undo this i think it's 17 or 18 with a half an inch bar uh, half an inch ratchet undo these two guys uh, they are pretty uh, stiff in there it's important i ended by uh, disconnecting this upper torque you see how uh, much the engine actually is tossing to the left side so you see how much is uh, displaced here so it's better not to break that mount and i didn't disconnect the uh, the downpipe flexible one but i think it's better to undo the flexible downpipe i know the bolts are uh, old the, the nuts are all there but uh you can go from underneath the engine it's safer because it's like it's like you see as you can see the engine went to the side like this so i don't know you just make your own choice a uh, quite big warning uh you notice when i uh uh drop the sock frame now everything is back in place i'm just uh, uh commenting on this issue and i dropped the sock frame the engine the whole engine uh shifted towards the where the timing belt side is so shifted to the right of the car the whole engine shifted by uh, half and one and a half almost two inches and i did notice there can be a big issue with this if we look in uh under in the car you notice on this right this is the uh where the um, uh timing belt uh, side is so that's the line this is power steering line this is i'm not sure what it is um you notice that when the engine shifted it may crush these lines here it's very close here and even more so if you look above the shiny hose here the shiny pipe that's the fuel line this is a gasoline engine that's the fuel line and it passes very close to the subframe and also to this lower engine mount and i want to just let you know that after i did uh, lower the subframe my engine uh, engine mount here got busted i don't know if it was like this before i did lower the subframe twice but it's definitely damaged it's detached the base this is a replacement i'll show right away how how it should be it's uh, when detached here which it shouldn't be also this uh, small um 
whatever are on the side are lower sitting low now I didn't pry on it but I suspect I, yeah I'm not gonna do just uh, to see if it uh, if it uh, moves because it's uh, clearly damaged uh, but also you notice that fuel line right there on the top here this one Coast passes so close, so close. I was lucky it didn't crash, it wasn't crashed by the engine uh, or the engine mount when the whole engine came towards this side. So my advice, it's really when lowering the subframe, have an eye. As you lower the subframe, check uh, continuously on this side. And maybe it's a uh, it's very uh, smart idea to place maybe not this size but to place a piece of wood in between the engine and the subframe somewhere here maybe from underneath to prevent the engine from shifting towards the timing belt i think it's pretty important uh, that will save your engine mount but especially that will save your fuel line which is not fun to replace and also that will save the uh um, power steering line and talking about the power steering line I've read of two people who had it crushed just at this area just kinked uh, just like like a dent in it but it started to spill uh, power steering fluid and this this guy uh, you don't want to start replacing it because it's attached to the steering uh, steering rack and you have to lower the subframe it's very very unpleasant to work on the steering rack on that side to remove that replace that line so warning about this prevent the engine from shifting to the side and this is a good uh, lower engine mount and you notice uh, i don't know if the camera will show but this side this rubber part on both sides it's uh vulcanized to the plate it doesn't detach at all from the plate it's really i did try to push it but it's really really glued to the plate so um yeah from underneath i think it's okay it has kind of rubber on the sides to prevent from knocking uh, also this uh, it has a li little bit different design but it's still the same dimensions uh, this uh, small uh, bar here which passes like this sits at the normal weight it's not the whole thing is not crushed downwards so i'm going to replace this one and it's not fun either because uh, the place is really tight to turn the ratchet and those two bolts here lower one bang inside the subframe are corroded and i know when i remove this one from the junkyard i know these are really hard to turn the i will need a, a long extension a long bar on over the ratchet these are really hard to turn until the end these are really uh corroded and uh, not funny to, to rotate so um consider this when uh, lowering the subframe here's another problem i had uh, when uh, dropping the uh, subframe so now i think it's back in place but i did damage my front strut one of them not both of them the reason is that um, these are replacement one and the car rides a little bit higher so one i know one shock is shorter the other is longer this one is the shorter one it, and it's this one that got damaged it started leaking uh, i didn't have any leak before and uh, actually it's a fairly uh, new uh, shock uh, it's like i bought a new uh, two years old it's a badge shock so it's a quality one uh, but it started leaking, but also most importantly, it started knocking. It's really the shock that's knocking. It caused uh, it has a low, loud bang. Um, yes, I know there are many other things that can knock, but trust me, it's the shock. Uh, also, when I got into a, 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 a deeper hole, it uh, was a country road that there was a hole when I the, the well dropped into that hole slightly. Uh, deeply but I was uh, driving very slowly and I heard a low low big uh, big bang in the shock so really the shock has a problem the thing is that happens because I didn't disconnect the end links or drop links whatever name is I didn't undo them and for sure the torsion bar or the anti-roll bar is supposed to rotate a little bit but actually when you are dropping the subframe you are uh, causing both sides of the bars to be 
under tension by the end links which are attached to the struts and the struts you do realize when the car sits like this the struts are extended to their maximum the road is pull it out at the most so basically when i drop the subframe with the end links connected to the anti-roll bar this put much much uh, extendable if i can say so force on the road and the road was already at, at its end at the here at the top so it actually forced the the strut to extend more the road and the road just maybe it has a stop or something inside it just damaged the, that part so yeah it got a damage in there uh, we replace it um, uh, fortunately they were in the same length so I got only one damage but uh, I you have to undo the end links by all means on both sides don't try to undo them at the bottom that one it's really stuck the torques bit is really small it will just rip off a, a, a trust to and try to undo it at the top here it's unfortunately that we have to do this but uh, you see the results if you don't another thing that I did remove is uh, right inside the car above the pedals and the steering shaft it's uh, attaching to the steering wheel and the um, steering wheel uh, shaft and uh, that's the shaft from the steering rack <coughs> there's a, a butterfly bolt which goes like this with the top above the steering being straight at this moment and they rem I did remove this thing uh, check for the specs because this is a crucial bolt this is a shear bolt that will shear off in case of a crash so it's detaching the two components if the uh, uh, there's a crash and so it doesn't get the, the steering rack uh, shaft coming into your legs so I did touch this to free a little bit this, uh, this uh, part of the uh, steering rack so uh, because the steering rack it's attached to the subframe I don't want it it's gonna rotate a little bit so I, I just want to make sure there's no forcing in there the butterfly bolt on this uh, steering coupler it's uh, the torque is 22 uh, feet pounds or 30 newton meters i would strongly advise get uh, even the cheaper uh, torque range to release it safely and you notice the way it goes first the nut goes at the bottom it's a 30 millimeter nut you are just turning the nut because it's locking itself so the nut uh, goes at, onto the bottom as the steering wheel it's straight uh, I also notice how it goes into that white plastic clip. It needs to be perfectly slide, slide into it. Uh, so um, double check this item. That's it. And then underneath here, this cover. It has two bolts. One on the side. We just look upwards like that. It's a 10 millimeter. And then it has some sort of a clip. Mine broke. Um, yeah, I don't know how it works, but uh, yeah, this is just like a clip. You depress it, but I guess it's gonna break because it's old and the plastic. And also at the rear, I did loosen up the two bolts here, the two uh, subframe bolts. I did not remove them; just loosen up uh, maybe um, half an inch, one centimeter, not more. This both sides both sides so loosen them up a little bit so to allow to the subframe to tilt a little bit uh, when you have finished the job and you put everything back in place don't forget this mount bolt 40 millimeters 14 millimeters it is possible that the holes will not be uh, aligned to insert the bolt easily or to turn it easily and that may be because the subframe at that point is not aligned with the engine so maybe just play a little bit with uh, the jack lower the subframe try attaching first the subframe bolt see how it goes for that bolt just to move a little bit the subframe and align the, uh, the holes um, again try not to drop the bolt inside there uh, and uh, also speaking about the subframe bolts uh, when you finish the job and you attach the bolts and tighten the bolts Volvo wants you to attach first to the left side of the car both of them uh, to uh, tighten first the left side of the car both of them front and rear and then the right side it's just a kind of uh, alignment of the subframe uh, thing to lower the subframe first 
we what we want to actually do is just to keep the engine in place and lower the subframe we do want the engine to drop so just either place a uh, stand jack with a uh, piece of wood underneath to keep it in position uh, either press a butter jack and i just lift it just slightly bit just to make sure the engine it's at the correct position at the normal position and then uh, i just place my uh, hydraulic jack on the opposite side the transmission so it's the opposite side of the transmission because i want this side of the subframe to drop some more so i place it there i just lift it just start it just to make sure it's uh, keep it in the place then i did remove the two bolts 18 millimeter and use the long long pry bar cheated bar and then now the bolts are out i am going to start lowering slowly the transmission And then uh, you see if you have the standard uh, extension here, that's the short, the longer one. You may need a longer one. I do have a set of separate extensions. And that's how you reach the two lower bolts. If you want to, just not to take a chance to go perpendicular on them. Left one, mine it's missing. And the right one, sorry. Right one is right there at the bottom you can also reach them from above but it's uh, it depends how easy are they uh, those to remove right so if you want to go in um, to see them from the front while you try to remove them then go from this space this is the space that you are going to see underneath the transmission the jackets on the other side so uh, you really get a front view of the of the uh, uh, valve body part that's how you remove the two last two bolts right there which I'm going to do right now just another view so you can see you can really reach those two bolts bottom ones uh, not the bottom the lowest one but those who are hard access uh, in a really really straight direction both of them don't forget to place your pan underneath because you're going to leak like 200 millimeters of oil catch them all my bolts are out I'm going for the pan for the uh, cover and uh, you notice the other holes uh, not this one this will come out with the cover but the other one the lower one I pull it from there it just stalls and slides slightly and then it just uh, goes on the side here it's better to have more more space and uh, uh, especially when you put the cover back in place so now to detach the cover this is gonna be one of the trickiest part i know mine it shouldn't be so stuck in there but you are going to go like this maybe even tap with a uh, sorry sorry you are going to go on the sides maybe even tap slightly with a hammer but don't pull too much so you don't bend the cover and go all over the place just like that uh, i mean more than this but all all around this upper section here all around go slightly take your time maybe it's gonna take 5 10 15 minutes doesn't matter and this is one of the reason why you are using gray one gray uh, rtv is because other types of rtv are going to be very very sticky in there the gray one if you need later on for some reason it's easier to detach that's why you want to choose that one so let's go like this and once you will notice it's splitting up at the top then you're just going to pry and uh, you are going to leak the oil and it's going to detach the rest of it is going to detach okay so probably as you can see it starts to detach i had to hammer it a little bit to tap it uh, to slide it in there in between at some places then at some point you are just praying a little bit and it's detaching at this moment i'll try to catch the flame so i don't uh, make a mess on the floor again see how much the, the subframe is lowered I'm not sure if you can see it. It's not in place. You can see it. It's pretty low. Uh, and you need to lower it this much in order to uh, in order to remove the cover from there. Sure I can do it one hand. So you need to keep this cable, uh, make some space from it. And this is also the way it's gonna it's gonna get back in place. I'm 
not gonna work with one hand. I had to toss a little bit the um, coolant hose just uh, to press it a little bit on the side. Uh, it's not very... Um, I didn't have to pull on the cover, but it's a bit awkward, especially because of the the hose, uh, return hose that's attached to it. Uh, but that's pretty much how it comes out. Maybe... Oh, that's cool. Great, great, great. Spill it everywhere, it's like blood. But maybe if you can detach it here, I'm not sure how it goes. But uh, myself, I wish, I just prefer to leave it like this. And there you have the uh, valve body. Um, you have the solenoids. You notice I was talking about the way they are placed. The, the solenoids, the way they are rotated in there. Um, let's see if the camera can catch. You see the upper one is the black one. Then you have the blue one has the connector is low uh, underneath. With the rostra one is gonna be on the top. And then you have the green one the same, it's underneath, that's what Volvo does. With the Rostar one, the green one also is going to be at the top, the connector, the green one part is going to be on the top of the solenoid. And uh, yeah, they, they get pretty much one way in there, you notice this is the upper bracket for the black one. Has a tiny bolt somewhere I think you need, let me see, the lower one you see it already. Is this one? Uh, that's the ball 10 or 8, I think it's 8 millimeter. And the Rostra wants to remove this, uh, not discard, but just toss this uh, plate. You are replacing it with the Rostra one in the correct position. For the upper one, we are going to toss this cable here. And there's the bolt right there for the small bracket. And keep in mind the way this bracket, upper bracket, goes. You are going to replace the one from Volvo. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, the solenoids do turn a little bit, I don't want to put my hands on them right now, they, they do, they have a little bit of play in there, both three, all three of them, don't be afraid, once you tighten down those bolts, they are staying with a little bit of play in there, but uh, it's, that's how it uh, should be. Also, keep in mind that these are, I think this one is what, uh, maybe six millimeters, a very tiny bolt actually, uh, careful don't over tight these guys you don't want to break them and you don't want to have them loosen up same for the lower one so just go by your feeling the way you are tightening them but careful and that's pretty much it so i'm replacing them now uh, i don't think the video will uh, continue from, uh, from the, this point on but um, uh, this um, then this I did, uh, did uh, already did this once. I'm not going to scrap this uh, old gasket. I'm just going to get um, something like a brake cleaner to remove all oil around. And I'm going to put the new uh, RTV over this old one because this one is hard to scrap from the cover. However, on the transmission side, I want to make sure everything is clean. I'm going to scrap everything in there, all the old gasket as much as I can and then I'm gonna spray because you cannot reach all the surface with uh, something like a thinner or something like that so I'm gonna spray carefully with that uh, let's say brake cleaner I'm gonna just spray around the area I cannot reach with my hand with a um, towel or something so I'm gonna spray just on the side on the side where is the mating surface especially on the sides here I cannot reach with my hands and um, the place where I can reach out, I just play, uh, get a towel, put some brake cleaner on it, and just pass it along, pass it along the mating surface. So you want it to be free of any oil. That's really important. Also remember when you put back in place uh, the uh, the the um, the lines, clean them well. Absolutely no dirt on them. Replace the lower seal. This one you don't need. To replace it but make sure everything is clean otherwise it's gonna leak good luck for this job one last tip uh, when you place the cover want to place it back in place before you put the, the rtv sealant you are putting on the cover side not on the transmission side so put it on the cover side get around all the bolts 
uh, don't put too much because it's gonna get into the transmission the accident uh, by the way check the RTV uh, instructions so basically you are putting a coat uh, really uh, is just a small film and uh, you are placing the cover in place you are tightening all bolts but finger tight just with your fingers and then leave it like that for one hour and then come back and tighten for the final torque which is not big it's just go with your guess actually it's really not uh, don't crush it too much because you are going to crush the sealant and it's not gonna seal but uh, before that before placing back the cover try to place it back without sealant on it just see how it goes because you don't want to touch the surfaces when you have sealant on it so just uh, practice a little bit one two times before uh, to install it before you put the actual RTV sealant on it and the second uh, uh, the second tip is that at the bottom you will always have a little bit of fluid leaking so even though you you spray some uh, brake cleaner or something bef between the moment you you have been sprayed the cleaner you clean the surface mating surface and the moment you actually press the cover on it is going to leak again so maybe place a little bit of uh, paper towel uh, underneath right in those holes to to just soak all the fluid that's in there right before placing the cover don't forget them in place then pull the uh, cover the um, the paper from there make sure the surface has no oil it's clean and then quickly place the cover in place so you don't have a leak at the bottom just confirm that the upper bracket it's an eight millimeter in the lower it's a 10 millimeter so uh, prepare your sockets for this i'm doing this uh, connectors see on the transmission side it has a bump and it's a very stiff one on solenoid side we have a small bridge that bridge keeps the bump in there so really important do not break this bridge or maybe this part you see if the bump is not secured by the bridge this part slides very easily out and with the vibrations and all the stuff and driving it's gonna disconnect and you're gonna lose contact so basically what I'll do I would strongly advise try uh, get a hair dryer and try to warm up the part here so metal gets softer so it's not brittle and I will just There's a small, I'm using this very, very flat, uh, tiny flat screwdriver. So I will just try to crush on this part, on the bump, crush it a little bit so it, it, it doesn't, it's not more anymore that higher actually. Just crush it, but that, don't fully crush it because you still need it to, to lock it in place. And then insert the screwdriver here. There's a tiny hole, insert it like this on the side because you have the connector, you have the two connectors here, the two uh, metal parts of the connectors. So you don't want to break those. So don't insert it flat like this, turn it 90 degrees, just like that. Insert it in that small hole and try to pry out the thing. Now it comes out because it, I just crushed a little bit the bump. But, uh, when it's not crushed, it's not coming out like this, it's too hard. So again, you see the two connectors are in there, the two metal parts, that's why you just insert the screwdriver in between. You, you absolutely make care, uh, uh, be careful not to bend them, that's very important. You have the Rostra solenoid uh, on the left and the Volvo one on the right side, these are the blue ones. Notice how uh, if you put the connectors on the same side, you notice how the channels are not on the same side. That's why uh, the Rostra instructions say to place all the solenoids with the connectors upwards. This is what the Rostra solenoids look when they are in place. That's the black upper one. The camera will catch the angle, it's a bit... Uh, that's the green one. Uh, and then there's the blue one, let me just move the light. There is the blue one. You notice the connectors are not perfectly vertical. If I look from above, they are not perfectly vertical. They're just a little bit towards the front of the car, but they are definitely 
on the upper position and it's completely for the two lower one is completely different than what Volvo put in the car um, notice perhaps how the wires stay on each side uh, there might be a little bit feeling try not to pull on the wire wires when you place them in place just go slightly uh, find the correct uh, way to insert them in there and I also found that uh, the uh, roster connectors are much tighter to press in place I don't think you can remove them once uh, they are placed there uh, I don't think you can disconnect that uh, solenoid anymore but uh, and also um, I found them quite a bit uh, tight to insert them in, uh, insert them in, into their into their hole right there so just go gently uh, you don't have to force but it's pretty tight actually notice how the solenoids just go pretty much all the way in all of them if you wonder how to place them in there the lower bracket is on place but uh, the solenoid definitely goes uh, almost all the way if you look at the one i pull it from there it has they have a groove here so that's the groove where the um, bracket is sliding on and because of that groove also they only can stay in one position once you secure them with the bracket once you have the bracket against the valve body and the bolt uh, properly uh, secure on the bracket so uh, that's pretty much how they go in there uh, they still may have a little bit of play even though even after you tighten the bolts but uh, again careful when tightening those two small bolts don't lose them also don't just go by common sense the the eight millimeter is a really small one so common sense don't over -tighten. again remember which way the lower bracket goes in there goes with the b there's a b stamped on it and the g it's lower the b it's upper remember that because if you look uh, the, it's pretty much uh, very close to the Volvo one but I did replace it as Volvo uh, Rostra says to put the Rostra one but if you look at it you can very easily swap it like this on both sides so keep the B at the top and the G at the bottom Rostra says it's really important it's just like that is it don't install upside down the lower bracket this one this is how the cover looks uh, with the sealant on it uh, ready to go in place don't forget to go all around the, uh, each bolt if you go just outside the bolt the fluid will get to the bolt and it's gonna leak by the bolt threads so go watch each hole all around uh, don't put too much if you put too much it's gonna go inside the transmission but make sure there is enough on outside and maybe when you place back the cover be sure not to touch at any point if you touch you are going to remove the RTV final word you have about five ten minutes after you've applied it to place the cover in place using the instruction the steps um, with uh, so one hour with finger uh, uh, finger tight for one hour then final tight then wait 24 hours before you put fluid transmission fluid back into the transmission Des fois, il y a du monde qui ne comprend pas c'est quoi le, le fluide reset et l'adaptative reset. Pas tout le monde qui comprend ça. Tu peux toucher? Là, on va démarrer le rond.
an update on this so uh, I did uh, drove uh, I did drive for some uh, 500 miles since I uh, did the uh, adaptation thing and uh, the way it works is that it's mostly city driving so shifting and stuff uh, for 600 500 miles the way it, seem, it seems to work is that when the transmission fluid is cold I still get some kind of bumpy shifting it's more like it's an hesitation and then kicks in not really not hard but definitely not smooth uh, but better than before that's for sure um, but when the transmission is fully warmed up it's I would say 95% perfect uh, it's not like a new car I do not expect it to behave like a new car or new transmission that's because it's not a new transmission so you still have other components there that may have wear on them especially the valve body or the other solenoids so I did replace only the three mine but there are other more solenoids in there but all in all uh, I'm uh, satisfied with the results they are really uh, I, I'm not worried anymore I don't have anymore that second to third gear kick like a pretty rough kick actually or first to second kick a smaller one not at all uh, it's just I can still feel it when it shifts it shifts gears but it's definitely uh, like uh, if I if you are going to like come in to buy the car from me and I tell you to pay attention to the way it shifts you will say it's just fine so there's nothing to worry about it so uh, hopefully this helps and uh, I encourage you to replace the solenoids definitely like do and um, yep hopefully this video helps it's a huge video it's a massive it took me a lot of editing time so be uh, kind of uh, on any mistakes uh, in the if I ever, uh, and I'm quite sure I forgot to talk about some point, just comment, just tell us your own experience. So let's hope this helps other people with these things. Good luck.